All right. So for this week's video for painting, you're going to need a thing of water to start with. We are going to need white, primary red, Alizarian crimson, black, burnt umber, primary yellow, Carillion blue, it's that really bright one, and that light green permanent. With these, we are going to make a watercolor background. So that's why we need a cup of water, because you are going to use that water to blend it in. I'm going to put all my colors on a clean paint tray. It just helps to start with a clean paint tray on this one. And I'm going to go with blue. Then crimson. I'm just putting a little bit in, you don't have to put a lot. Yellow. White. And green. And I'm going to do a watercolor background. So what I mean by a watercolor background with acrylics is I'm going to get a very wet brush and I'm going to actually make a puddle of water in that paint tray with my paint. Now I'm just doing an 8 by 10 nothing crazy. And I'm just going to put about an inch or two down of blue. If you think it's too dark, you can always sponge it off. Completely up to you. Now I have a couple brushes in my water, just so I can kind of mix it around. So next I'm going to do the same with crimson. I'm going to get a decent amount of water in there and on my brush. And I am going to mix it in, kind of into my blue and down. Not a solid line, just kind of creating that sunset feel. Oh, and I dribbled blue. I didn't realize I did. That's okay. Kind of up into my blue, down. Just to kind of create that purplish red tint that a sunset does. Kind of switch my brushes around. Next I'm going to do yellow. Now before I mix my yellow directly into my red, I'm going to make a big chunk of it that is solid yellow. And now I'm going to mix it up into my red. Because once I get into my red, it's going to make those orangish colors, which is fine. But I didn't want that orange everywhere. I'm kind of notice I'm going back and forth from using my brush like a brush and using it as a hard edge. That is up to you how you want to use it and when you want to use it. You can also use smaller brushes. I just prefer big brushes when I'm using the watercolor technique. Kind of get that down in there. So now I'm going to start going using my whites and greens. I'm going to make sure my brush is cleaned off really well. I'm going to get my white wet first. And kind of do a white right across that bottom yellow to lighten my yellow up a little bit at the bottom. this orange with this white. Get that wet again. And now I'm going to grab some green. I'm going to get that green a little wet. Get my brush wet. And I'm going to finish off the bottom with that. So I have a little bit of white on my brush that's so going to be kind of a olivey minty green. And I'm going to mix it right into that white and yellow. And it's kind of a hill, so I'm going up about two inches. Like I said, I'm only on an eight by 10. 
but there's my hill. And that is your background. You're gonna then let this dry before we do anything else. And like, if it's too dark for you, go ahead and use a wet or a dry paper towel and soak some up. Otherwise, it might surprise you once it dries as well. Okay, so next on this one, we're actually gonna add a little bit of hooker's green. I know I didn't say it to begin with, but we're gonna add it. I'm gonna just put a little dot in my paint tray. I'm gonna use a smaller brush. But again, I'm still gonna get it wet. We're still kind of using that water method on this. I'm just gonna kinda give my hill some darker green as well. Use some water. Just because I want my hill to have some contrast, not just that bright green. I'm gonna kinda, I used kind of a choppy brush to put it on here just to kind of give it a grass texture. Got a lot of bubbles on here from this brush, which is okay. I'm gonna leave it like that. Next, I'm gonna use my burnt umber. And that just kind of plopped out there. And I'm going to use a tiny, tiny brush or several tiny brushes to create a tree. Now obviously with the brown, I am just creating the trunk of the tree. I'm kind of use the side of this square brush to create my shape. And I'm gonna make a long branch because we are going to put a tire swing out on this branch. Now I'm not using water this time. I want a hard brown line. I'm just gonna kind of, in this water here, I'm just gonna kind of fork it because the end of a tree has some texture as it grows up out of the ground. And I'm kind of giving my tree texture as I go too. I'm not smoothing all of that paint out. I'm leaving some grain. Now on my branches, I'm just kind of branching out in places. And I am holding my brush upright and using it like a pencil, even though it's square, I'm using it as a hard line. Fatten this up a little bit. And then fork it out. And your branches can look however you want. You can have as many or as little as you want. I'm kind of getting heavy on some of them. So I can beef up the end of this one a little bit. If it's holding a tire swing, it should probably be a little thicker. Now I'm gonna use a really thin brush. And add in a few extra here. Remember, tree branches grow in every direction. There really is no right or wrong when making tree branches. Some little branches coming off down here. There we go, nothing special. I'm gonna use a little bit of white on there. I have some watered down white. I'm just gonna pull up here, even if it has a little bit of yellow in it, that's not that big of a deal. 
just to kind of add some highlights inside my tree while it's still wet. And that kind of watered down white that I've saved is just going to blend right on in there to create some tan. And I'm just kind of putting it in places to add some texture and difference within my tree. That wet's kind of helping me smooth out some problem areas as well. And making my tree a little bit more dimensional so it's not just brown, it's several shades of brown. I think I'm going to leave it like that.